Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Dave Klein, and before I start this video about Dark Souls 2, I do want to put a little warning here, which is that there is no gameplay footage over any of this because I don't think I can post any of it. So it's going to be a very long video that proceeds because I didn't realize how much I wanted to talk about the game and how many things there were that I wanted to talk about. And it's just going to be me talking with some music to help move it along. So if you guys don't want to hear that, I'm warning you right now so you can just peace out. But otherwise, if you guys do want to hear it and you do want to chat about some Dark Souls 2 stuff, stick around, you can hear my thoughts, you can hear what I noticed. So uh, thanks to you guys who stick around and just want to give you that warning. So I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Dave Klein and we need to talk because I was fortunate enough to get to play the Dark Souls 2 beta and I wanted to give you guys some of my impressions. So if you didn't know, I actually had the chance to play the game in E3 as well. So if you want, just click down there and you can click and see my E3 impressions, gameplay impressions. I also talk a little bit about some of my lore speculation and I think some of it might be on par. We'll see about the rest of it. And also, I'll probably be touching on some of the same things that Ian B talked about in his lore or his um his gameplay speculation, which you can click on right down there. So make sure to check out both of those if you haven't, because I'll be touching on some of the things I talked about in E3, some Ian B stuff, I'm sure. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started, because man, it was I mean it was awesome, it was great. So for those of you guys who had a chance to play the beta, you know, make sure to comment, let me know what you guys thought, let me go. If there's anything I talk about that you have some different impressions of it, you have some different thoughts, because I love to hear what you guys had to say. But let's go ahead and talk about some of the things. So I was trying to take notes, trying to write down things to talk about. And um, so this time around in E3, they gave you four starting classes to try out. And um, this time they added two more. They added a soldier class, and they added a hunter class. And again, these are just kind of base classes, because once you get to the level up screen and menu, which we got to use this time, didn't get to try that out at E3, but this time we did, um, there is a lot going on. So uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about here are some of the stats. And I know EMB touched on this, and again, check out his video if you haven't. He does a really good job explaining it. But I got to actually write down, because um, I had three hours with it, which was amazing. Uh, I got to write down some of this stuff. So this time around, you've got Vigor as a stat, which is essentially his HP. You got Endurance, which is Stamina, like it used to be. You got Vitality, which is your max equipment load, and that's it. It specifically affects your max equip load. Uh, endurance now is only Stamina, Vitality is now only max equip load. Uh, you got Attunement, which is just like it was before, the number of spells you can have attuned. You have Strength, which is the same as before. Dexterity, which is the same as before. Uh, I'm trying to think, okay, so you got Agility. And agility is the really new different stat here, which is going to affect your speed of evasion, your blocking, and other actions, quote. So speed of evasion kind of works in play with, um, I think it works in play with vitality as far as dodging goes, but agility really affects a lot of interesting different things, which I'll touch in in just a little bit. And then you've got your intelligence stat, which is magic and fire. So now intelligence affects fire. So unlike Pyromancy, which was kind of its own stat in Dark Souls, um, now Intelligence is both Magic and Fire. So uh, it's kind of that whole idea of Fire is with the Catalyst now, so it makes sense that Intelligence would affect that. And now Faith is going to be your Lightning and Dark spells. So Faith, Lightning base, kind of like, you know, Wind type of stuff from Dark Souls 1. You know, uh, all of that type of Realm of Faith and Dark, which would kind of be the opposite spectrum of what Faith would affect. So Faith is Lightning and Dark. Uh, so then, those are your stats that you can level up, that you can essentially bring up and use to affect all of your other stats. And your other stats are your HP, MP, Equip Load, Spell Attunement, Slots, Spell Casting Speed, which is now there, which is now a specific thing, not affected by Dexterity. Um, I think it's actually affected by... I wrote it down somewhere. I think it's affected by attunement, but I could be wrong. But it's not affected by dex this time around. I'm pretty positive. Dexterity affects your dex strength and your poison and bleed. But uh, you got your spellcasting speed, and the really interesting new ones are evasion, your action speed, and trap disabling. And these are all affected by agility. All of them affect these three things. So evasion is, quote, the ability to adroitly evade attacks. It improves with agility. So I think that 
evasion is essentially your invisibil invincibility frames when you're dodging. It's pretty much that. And I was playing around with leveling up my um, my agility a lot because it was the new thing. I was like, I gotta test out agility. I gotta see what it does. And I think it really changes your role. So your role now, unlike in the E3 demo where we only had one role, and I kind of talked about that in my uh, in my E3 impressions. Uh, now in the beta, they actually have different types of different looking roles, like you have in Dark Souls. So they did add that, and I think your evasion, the higher it is, the um, the cooler or better your role looks, and the more invincibility frames you get. However, the quickness, the speed of your roll, I think it's still based off of your equip load. So the lower your equip load. Uh, based on how much equip load you have, or the lower the lower the amount of equipment you had based on your equip load, the faster you can roll and the faster you run. So both of those are going to affect your invincibility frames and your dodging now, I think. So I think now you actually need two stats in order to do that properly. But evasion, I'm pretty positive, is invincibility frames and affects how your roll actually looks. So make that look cool. Make that sucker look cool. It also affects your action speed. So your action speed is the ability to, quote, quickly raise a shield, use items, etc. It proves with the agility. The big etc. here is I think it affects Estus Flax. So Estus Flax took forever. They took forever to drink. So uh, when I first started out and I wanted to take a sip on that delicious Sunny D, yeah, it was slow as fuck. So, uh, the more you raise up that action speed, you will slowly start drinking that Estus Flask and chuckling that Sunny D a little bit quicker. So, um, it's actually a pretty important stat, I think. I think you're really going to want to be raising that up. I think that's going to affect pretty much any build. I can't think of any build that you pro you wouldn't really care about that. And maybe except for maybe a tank build, but it also affects the ability to raise a shield quickly. So that still works for tank builds. So it seems like an important stat to me. But the other thing it does is trap disabling, and that's the chance of disabling traps on objects like chests and improves with the agility. Now in the demo there was a chest mimic poison box, which I will touch on later, but uh, I don't think, I don't know, maybe this would have affected so you could just open it without there being poison. I'm not sure. I got poisoned. I still got the item. Who cares? I got the items. There were items in it. But, um... Yeah, I, I'd actually already rate. Actually, no, I was playing a different build that didn't have a lot of agility, so I don't know. But uh, maybe you want to get a poison. So uh, I'm curious to see if you guys who did have the chance to play the beta, if you want to go ahead and comment and tell me, hey, did you guys get poisoned when you opened that treasure chest? Did everybody get poisoned? Did you find the treasure chest? Because that was kind of one of the cool exploration things that you had to find. Uh, let me know. So another big thing, and I know this has been touched on several times. I touched it on my E3 thing, I think e e and B talked about it when he had a chance to play the beta the first time. I know he played it again, he's probably making a video right now, maybe he's not, I don't know. But um, he did have a chance to play the beta earlier than I did, and then he played it again during this beta round. Yeah, I hope I play with him, I don't know his PS3 name, but uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But uh, anyways, so there are three slots per weapons and shield, now, or weapons and shield. There's now three slots, yeah, your shield slots, so now there's three weapon slots. And you can hold three different weapons to cycle through as opposed to two. And there are now three different shield slots where you can hold three weapons or items now that you can dual wield in your left hand. So right hand has three slots, left hand has three slots now. So that is new. And uh, every single one of those is going to affect your total weight. So before when I was talking about my E3 impressions, I didn't have you weren't allowed to open up the menu. So I couldn't test roll speed at all except for the builds I was given. And it seemed like you were a little bit slower depending on the heavier weapon that you used. That was all I could really tell you. Well, now I can tell you that uh, your equipment load does completely... Here it is. It completely affects how quick you are. Equipment load is still there, just like in Dark Souls does the exact same thing. So, um, every single one of those slots is going to affect your roll speed. So, maybe you're only going to really want to have one weapon equipped and one shield equipped or whatever. Uh, maybe you want two and one. Maybe you want three and three, I don't know, but the thing is, it will affect your speed, it will affect your roll speed, so I don't... I, I, I can see the use of having three, but I have a feeling that skilled players, and once you become a veteran, you're not going to want to have all three of either equipped. You're probably going to do one and one, or one and two. I can't... I, I really don't see everyone using all three, but hey, no reason not to. The other thing is, you now have uh, 
10, 10 item slots, 10. And uh, you know what, during the demo, it was coming in useful because I was really needing to use a lot of healing items. And speaking of which, there are, th the ones in the demo that they had were there were Estus Flasks, there were Life Gems, and there were Radiant Life Gems. So Estus Flasks work just like Estus Flasks work in Dark Souls, except for that uh, you don't start healing right away. It actually takes a little bit longer once you start sipping on that delicious D to start healing. Um, but then you heal pretty quickly once you actually get it. But the thing is, it's, it's almost a bigger risk now because once it... If you start sipping on it and you get hit, you don't get healed at all. You actually have to finish drinking it to get the heal. So, in a way, it's almost a little more difficult because you can't get that quick heal off. And you could get totally screwed. Because before, if you start drinking your Estus and you get hit, you still get a bit of that heal and you get hurt for however much that hit was. Now you wouldn't even get that Estus increase at all so you could die because you got hit and you didn't really get any of that Estus increase. Uh, life gems work where they slowly heal your health over time, and same with radiant life gems. Radiant life gems are essentially just the better version of life gems. That's all it is. That is the only difference between the two of them. So, um, as far as weapons go, I was looking at all of them, and the scaling is back on the weapons, just like it was before. You had your E scaling through, I think A scaling was the best weapon I had. Um, and that was on a strength weapon, but you know you have weapons that are more of uh, quality builds. You have strength builds, dex builds. Um, I was I was pretty much I'm more of a a dex player, so that's usually how I play. But I also sometimes do quality style and a little bit of strength. But I rarely do faith or intelligence, so I didn't test that out so much. I'm I'm sorry, guys. I I only had three hours. I wanted to play and have fun a little bit along with things, so I didn't test those out quite as much. But um. Regardless, the important note here is that strength scaling is back, dex scaling is back, intelligence scaling is back, and faith scaling is back. All four of those slots are back. So those are all there. Uh, something I do want to touch on is sliding down ladders. So when I played at E3 and I tried to slide down a ladder, I jumped off. And I know EMB when he and then I managed to slide down once. I had no idea how I do it. Did it. And I know EMB in his beta impressions, he tried to slide down the ladder and also said he couldn't do it. Well, I figured out how to slide down ladders. I'm sure a lot of you guys who play the beta did. But uh, basically, this time around, you don't just hold the circle button or B button on an Xbox controller. You have to hold circle and then you hold down, and that will make it so you start sliding down. So first, I had to hold circle, then hold down, and then I started sliding. So there are now two buttons there. And speaking of which, jumping is also different this time around. So this time, as opposed to while you're running, uh, tapping on cir uh, circle to jump, tapping on circle while you're running will just make you do your evade roll. Which is actually kind of good, I think, because a lot of times I would jump by accident when I wanted to roll. Now they made it so by tapping the left trigger while you're running, that is how you jump, which is good and bad. It's good for the reason I said, where if you want to dodge, you never have to worry about that. You're always going to dodge, you're always going to do your dodge roll, no matter what, if you tap circle. On the bad side, it was kind of hard to pull off the jump, I felt. And there was one moment where there were these human effigies, which is now how you become human. It's no longer humanity, it's now called human effigy, where you had to jump for it and hit this exact jump. And I took a lot of tries. I know a lot of people I was reading up took a lot of tries to get that because honestly, it, yeah, it was a very specific target you had to hit and you had to not roll when you hit the jump or roll in the exact right spot. But the other thing is that it, it's really, I, I think it's kind of hard to pull off the way that you have it because you have to be running with circle and then tapping that left trigger. And I don't know about you guys, but when I play Dark Souls, I play half claw grip, half normal. Um, as opposed to normal normal. It just makes sense to me. And it, it just seems hard with the way I play to trigger that. But I mean, I'm sure you can master it like anything else. You can master it and that's what Dark Souls always teaches us. Parry reposting. Let's talk about that. Parry reposting. It is different and I talked about this in my E3 impressions and EMB also talked about it in his beta impressions. But I'm going to talk about it again because I got a chance to utilize it so much here uh, this time around. Um, so when you parry an enemy this time around, it is the exact same way you would normally parry an enemy. 
it is the exact same. Some of the enemies work a little harder than others to figure out the parry timing, just like Dark Souls and Demon Souls. But once you parry them, instead of being able to immediately repost them, they fall flat on their asses, and you have to wait a moment. And if you immediately start trying to attack them, you're not going to carry out the repost. You're, you're still going to hurt them, but it's not going to be that epic repost damage. Um, you have to actually wait a moment for them to fall. And once they're on the ground, and after their falling animation is over, then you can do your repost. And instead, you go over and you stab them in the stomach! And at first when I played at E3, I, I actually didn't like it very much because I was so used to that immediate stab back. But I, I gotta tell you guys, let me be honest with you, the more I used it, the more I liked it. And it, it, it's hard in the sense that you can't immediately get those invincibility frames of using the repost like you can in Dark Souls. But they added a lot of animations to it. So each weapon, or not necessarily each weapon, but a lot of different weapons I was using had different animations for the repost. And that felt pretty badass to have different animations for, and that made it pretty fun. And I, they're definitely, it feels pretty satisfying when enemies on the ground you just go and stab him in the stomach. You brutalize him! I mean, maybe it's not the same thing as stabbing an enemy through the groin, which is also pretty awesome. But you know, it's fun, it's different, it's fun, and I actually, you know what, I, I started to really dig it, so I was surprised, because it was something I actually didn't like very much during when I played at E3, and this time around I actually started really getting into it, and I was pairing enemies a lot, so I was starting to have a lot of fun with that, so that was definitely cool. But something worth noting is I did try reposting an enemy both one-handed and two-handed, and at least when I noted it, uh, it looked like I did the exact same amount of damage regardless if I was one or two handed for the repost. So I don't know if that's something they're going to change, they just haven't changed those stats yet or figured out the final adjustments because those things take a lot of time, especially those final number adjustments. Um, but it's um, this time around, at least for this beta, as it is in this form, it was the same attack that you hurt them for. So that is worth noting and that is why I'm noting it. So, as far as rolling and invading works, because, again, I play deck style, so this is a lot of what I'm going to be talking about. But as far as rolling and invading works now, I think it's a mixture of agility and endurance. So, in terms of how you get the best possible roll. Um, I was talking about in the E3 demo, it seemed like they completely nerfed it. And it, it still does seem like they nerfed it. It's still not as powerful of a tool as it was or an asset as it was in Dark Souls. At least it doesn't feel like it yet, and maybe it's because you have to really level up to make it that good. But it seems like it's a mixture of if you increase your agility, I, like I said before, I think that's going to increase your invincibility frames and make it so you have a better roll. And then you want to increase your endurance, and I think that's going to make it so you roll quicker. So you kind of want to get both of those off. Because I, I noticed when I had my agility pretty high, and I'm pretty sure this is right, and correct me if I'm wrong if you guys played the beta, but I'm pretty sure this is right, um, that once you increase your agility, you start having those cool flippy type of rolls. That's that's what I'm going to call it, flippy type of roll. Not a ninja flip roll, unfortunately, but I hope that's back because I love ninja flip. Yes. But um, you still have those flippy rolls in it, and... Um, you, when you equip the heavier weapon and you have heavier armor on, you still do that. It's not as fat rolly, but it's slow. It's really lumberingly slower than if you have no equipment on. So if you throw off all of your equipment, if your equipment load is really low, then it's going to be the same animation, at least as far as I noticed, but a lot quicker. And I actually did record some video of it, but I, I'm sorry it's not on this. I don't want to get this video taken down. And I don't know if this itself is going to get the video taken down. So anyone watching this from Bamco, if you want me to take this down, I will take it down. Just let me know. I will take it down. But um, regardless, I don't want to post the video. I'm sorry, guys. I, I just did it from my own notes so I could talk about this better. But um, if I can, I would love to show you guys because it was sick. Uh, anyways... Weapon weights. Uh, so the heavier weapons do much more damage, just like in Dark Souls. You know, well, I mean, then again, we don't know about. There was no way to test it out Titanite shards, Titanite chunks, all that stuff, and leveling up weapons in this game, at least for this demo, which makes sense. But um, just like in Dark Souls, the heavier, the bigger weapons are slower. You swing them much, much slower, 
and this time around they actually a they were fucking epically huge they were ridiculously big there were some ones that were like uh, they were they looked like cloud strife swords at least one of them pretty much looked like a cloud strife sword but uh it felt slower it felt like a it really felt like you were swinging this giant sword almost to the point where a lot of times i was choosing just to use a basic short sword just because it was so much quicker and i'm actually the type of player who i play with a great scythe a lot which is a pretty slow weapon compared to like the balder swag sword so it was surprising to me that i was choosing that i mean in the end i actually kind of chose a lighter character who had not as heavy of armor with just carrying around a giant sword so uh, that was kind of what I ended up going with, and I would go back and forth between the light sword and the giant sword if I was, depending on the enemy, because there were a lot of big enemies in this. But um, weapon weight, it, the bigger weapons feel heavier this time around, I gotta say, they really felt heavier to me. So um, another thing that I noticed too with the weapons is it, it seemed like the amount you hurt an enemy for really varies. There's a lot more variables to how you affect how that affect how much you actually hurt an enemy for so it could be like maybe I, I don't know exactly what it was maybe if you hit them with your hilt as opposed to that hard part of a sword they actually factor that in and it doesn't hurt them for nearly as much as if you hit them for the long side it might have been if you're low on endurance because it seemed like sometimes when i was low on endurance i wasn't hurting them for much but it could have just been like i was getting desperate like no i need to kill them um, so it's something I'm gonna have to watch a little bit more and check on and see how they're dealing with that So but I just want to get this video out because I was so excited, but um Yeah, they they definitely have more factors though this time around for how you deal damage as opposed to like, okay You knocked an enemy's guard down and you hit him right away or you got that counter-attack There is more to it and there are a lot of different numbers. I was noticing so that was kind of different uh, So another thing to talk about I know Ian B touched on this so the more you die the less and less your health bar gets and it goes in smaller increments than i think emb made it sound it might be just something that they changed since he played it or maybe i just it's been oh, a month or so since i watched this video but um this time and at e3 they didn't have it at least i didn't notice it at e3 but anyways um once you restore humanity your health is full it's completely full every time you die a little tiny increment gets taken off of your health and it keeps on going down for a while I don't know how far it goes down the most times I died before I restored my humanity even though I don't think it's called humanity this time around you use an item called human effigy to restore your humanity and effigy shield connection maybe cult rebellion maybe somewhere in there maybe I don't know uh, anyways uh, I know EMB touched on some of that too uh, anyways, um, the, I'm kind of losing my train of thought, sorry, maybe I should white flash it, but I don't know if I will, because I'm feeling lazy, because it's really late right now. Anyways, oh yeah, so the, mo the most times I died was six, I died six total times, and then I restored to human, using the human effigy. So, at that point, after dying six times, I had lost half of my health. Uh, and my health bar had gone down to half of what it was, and it was all increments. And that was when I was jumping and trying to get that. Actually, I was jumping for this one thing I was telling you guys about, where you keep on jumping to try and get it. And I was like, I have to get, it. I have to get this, I have to get this, even though I had so little precious time. At that point, I thought I'd found it everything, and I found out I was horribly, horribly wrong. And this was a terrible mistake of mine to try and get this item, because all it turned out to be was human effigy. It was just more fucking human effigy, which I already had enough of. So I was like, why? But. Anyways, I kept on jumping for this item, but the cool thing was it led me to another secret area that had the cool mimic box I was telling you guys about. But, uh, yeah, so that leads me to the next thing to talk about, which is explorable areas. So, the demo had a limited area for you to go in. They had kind of fog gates up for areas you weren't allowed to explore. And the cool thing about this was, and this was the difference between, I think, the demo to me at E3 and this version of it, was the E3 demo was very much, we have this very specific track for you to go on, and you're going to take that track, and that's all you can do. You can't go to the sides at all. Uh, this time around, it felt much more Dark, dark Souls-y to me. 
They gave you the area that you were in and the area had branching paths, there were different ways to go, uh, there are a couple different bosses and different ways that you could branch out to get to them, there are a bunch of secret different areas that you could find, there are different ways to get to the same paths, so it was a much bigger feeling, it felt had that feeling of exploration to it that to me is something I really really like about Dark Souls. So I really got into it this time around, just feeling like, okay, I need to explore this, I need to find that. And they give you all those carrots on a stick, which is essentially where you see an item in the distance, and you're like, okay, how do I get to that item? I need to figure it out. And it's that, that dangling carrot that you need to that you want to find that gets you going further. So they had a lot of those, and that was great. It really made me want to explore further, and there was a lot of cool things I found, and even like that human effigy example I was telling you where you had to jump to this area where all you see is there's this item in the distance that you had to jump for off of a ledge to get to onto like a tiny ledge. Um, like a tiny turret that you have to jump onto. Once you jump on there, you're suddenly like, fuck, where do I go? I just jumped off a ledge to get here. So I just ended up jumping for the hell of it to try and jump up to a higher ledge, which of course didn't work. And I jumped onto a lower hidden ledge that then had a secret cave in it that then had a mimic dress chest and more to it. And then there was like another like little hut area that you could fall in the roof of, and that was the secret of how to get this hut, but you had to know to go up top, find the roof of it, and figure out that there was actually a whole opening in the roof for you to fall into and find some items. And you see these cage windows around it, so you know that there's items in there, but you there's other huts like that that you can see, but there's just doors to walk into. This one has no doors, and it turns out there's a little roof that you can fall into. But um, there were a lot of different branching paths that you could take to get to the same area. Some of them shorter than others, some that maybe you want to work your way around. So it was really cool. I actually had a much, much better time with this demo. And maybe it's because I also had three hours as opposed to 20 rush minutes at E3 uh, to play it. But I actually, I, I gotta say, I, I really liked it. This felt much more Dark Souls to me this time around because exploration to me is really what Dark Souls a lot of it is about. So uh, some enemies that we should, that I want to talk about with you guys and I'll talk about lore in a different video. I did want I did take a lot of lore notes and uh, again for the sake of I don't know what I can and can't say or if I even can be saying this stuff. I don't want to talk about the lore in this video. I'll do it in another video if I do do it. Some of the lore that was in the game because hey I don't want you guys who don't want lore being spoiled getting that spoiled for you. And B, the other thing is that I just, you know, I figure, hey, just do gameplay in this specific video and I can do a lore one in a different video. But um, some enemies, though, that I do want to talk about is there were a lot of orcs, or there were, I guess there was only one orc. Was it the one of the orcs? Well, anyways, there was the one giant enemy who had ringed attacks that was sort of an orc, kind of like you were seeing orcs and such in the demo. Um, Big thing to me, at least, is the necromancers and skeletons are back. Necromancers not shooting flames at you, but a type of necromancer that raises skeletons from the dead, and the skeletons will keep on coming back until you find the skeleton, the necromancer, and kill it. This time around, it was in a cave where you need to light a torch and go into the cave, and you can only really see very well if you've lit a torch, so you don't really have your shield to use with respawning constant skeletons. So in that sense, it makes it a little more difficult. <laughs> Because not only are you trying to get away from these respawning skeletons, but uh, yeah, you can't really see unless you don't have a shield because you're using a torch. The thing I will note though is that the skeletons actually took longer to be necromanced back into existence. So in that sense, they gave you a bit longer of a buffer. So kind of a little bit of a back and forth there. Another thing to note about the enemies is that this time around, you can't just do this crazy massive damage to an enemy like you do in Dark Souls that at least it shows you the number of. Once the enemy's just about dead, I was hurting them for like 42 damage or 27 damage as opposed to my normal attack which would be like 227 damage or if I reposted somebody like 400 damage or such and such. Um, that final attack will just hurt them for as much as needs be. So they just choose to give you that number which for numbers buffs who really love numbers in the sake of like hey how much health does this enemy exactly have? I guess it's good for them but for, I think, a lot of us who love seeing that giant overkill of an enemy, that's unfortunately gone, unless they decide to change that back. So at the moment, that is how that is. So, another type of enemy that was in the E3 demo, and now, but I didn't have a chance to really fight them because I was just trying to run to the boss at the end, 
Um, this time I did fight them are Red Phantom enemies, and they're very similar to Red Phantom enemies from, say, um, someone who's Grave Lord in it up. It's, it's the same sort of concept as it's the same enemy that you would see a normal enemy of, except for that is a much more powerful version. Now, the thing that I noticed with these ones, though, is they seem to stay permadead, these Red Phantoms. So once you kill them, at least in the beta, again, a lot of this is specifically in the beta, um... Once you killed a red phantom, it would just stay dead. So if you died, went back to a bonfire, that red phantom would be gone. So in that sense, it was nice. And all the red phantoms were specifically the harder giant enemies. So uh, it was kind of nice. So you can make more progress in the three hours that we had. And just play around a little bit more that they were permadead. But uh, yeah, so the red phantoms, at least in the demo, they stayed permadead. I don't know how they'll do it for the final game. So another thing I was trying to note was the different weapons and how, what type of stats they took. And just like in Dark Souls, you have strength stats for your strength requirements, you have dex stats. And I noticed that there were weapons I was using that I didn't have the strength requirement for at first. And when I equipped it, it would tell me, hey, you don't have enough strength to use this weapon properly. And then it seemed like I was using it just fine. And then I would level up my strength, and I leveled up specifically to test this out. I leveled up my strength to just, say, just check out, like, hey, maybe if I level up my strength, I'll use this weapon slightly differently. Maybe I'll swing it faster or something. I don't really notice a difference. So I, I think this is just a beta thing uh, where there was no difference. But it's worth noting, it is worth noting that at the moment, I was able to use uh, giant strength weapons without having the proper strength. But again, I think that's specifically for the beta they did that so people could use all the different weapons and try out the different weapons. So I, I have a feeling they just kind of made it so that stat didn't matter. But that stat is still there. So you still do have strength, dex requirements, intelligence requirements, faith requirements, all that stuff. Alright, so let's talk about some online mode. Because for E3, I didn't actually have a chance to check out online because it was E3. They had no online connectivity. They didn't really have that there for the E3 demo. But this time... There was online, it was all through it. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about some White Phantom and White Phantoming. Uh, at the moment, I, at least uh, the most White Phantoms I could summon was two that I noticed. Maybe you can summon three, but I think after I summoned two, it told me I had the max that you could summon. So, still two White Phantoms that you can summon. And um, I think you can get invaded again while you have your two White Phantoms, but I actually never got invaded when I had multiple White Phantoms. So, um, didn't happen to me, but it, it can. And the interesting thing here to me about white phantoms and doing the white phantom thing is this time around you have not just a white soapstone, but there's another item which was a small white soapstone. So the white sum soapstone says that for defeating a player, you are rewarded a token of fidelity for successfully assisting a player. Uh, the small one, however, sa just says you will be rewarded for successfully assisting the player. Um, so I don't know exactly what the difference between the ward was. Now for the small soapstone, you also have less time than the regular soapstone. And for the small soapstone, it also says that you can only use it in particular places to provide assistance. So I don't know if maybe you'll get a white soapstone before the large white soapstone, or maybe there's places where you won't be allowed to use the white, large white soapstone that you have to use the small one. But um, I when I only when I assisted someone, I only did it with the large white soapstone just because I wasn't thinking. Because I was like, I want to have as much time as I need. So I, I ended up helping them defeat one of the bosses. And I got a token of fidelity. Which was awesome. But I, I'm not sure what you get for the small white soapstone. So it's something different. So actually, if anyone, again, if anyone played the beta, let me know. Let me know what you guys got or if you got anything for using the small white soapstone. Because I'm really curious. But you do apparently have less time if you use that one. So as far inv as invasions go... I was reading in the comments on Reddit that people were who people who played the uh, the beta. A lot of people were saying that they got invaded while they were hollow. I can say that was not my experience. I never once got invaded while playing hollow. And the very my first hour playing, I was playing through hollow pretty much the entire first hour just because I was curious. I wanted to see if I would get invaded, and I wanted to see what the single player experience was like before I started doing some of the online stuff and kind of like get my own feel for the game before I started helping other people out, having other people help me. And I didn't get invaded that entire time. So uh, when I actually started, when I was human, I got invaded twice. And the first time I was talking to an NPC, there's one NPC in the demo, at least that I found, and the person killed me while I was talking to the NPC. 
So, thanks a lot for that, boyo. The second time I played a PvP match, I pulled off a backstab, I parried the guy, and I forgot about the repost and that you're not supposed to repost right away. So I didn't pull off my repost on him because he fell on his ass, didn't get it, and then he killed me right after that. So if I got in that repost, I consider that one a real match. When I was talking, I don't because I was in the middle of talking. So, uh, but anyways, and they, they were fun. I mean, it's just like classic PvP. It was fun. It was great. It was like normal PvP that you would have. Um, so it was a good time. But yeah, at least from my experience, I, I didn't get invaded when I was hollow. But I know, I think EMB was saying that you can. And I think I was reading on Reddit that people, other people who played said that you can get invaded while you're hollow. So maybe you can. I'm just saying it didn't happen to me. Or maybe you're less likely to get invaded when you're hollow. Maybe that's the case. Maybe the more hollowed out you are, the less likely you are to get invaded. Because some people were saying that they were only getting invaded when they were only like one to two versions of hollow. Whereas further, further on, they weren't. So maybe that's the case. I mean, that could be it. That would make sense to me. If like the worse you're doing, the less often you get invaded. So that could be the way they're doing it. Uh, another thing... Now, since I'm talking about being hollowed out, they changed the way you look. You look a little bit more like a zombie to me than like a straight walking corpse. Uh, so, actually, you know what? I, I didn't test that I should have. Was I, I looked at how I looked hollow and human, but I didn't look as I was slowly getting more hollow. So maybe you look more and more hollow, which would be really cool, and more and more corpse-like. But I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't have a chance to test that. Uh, so let's talk about boss fights. Boss fights, boss fights. So, if you guys don't want to hear about some of the bosses, Skip ahead. So, I had a chance to face only one of the bosses because, because I didn't know there was a second boss. I beat the first boss and I was like, you know what, now I'm going to help people beat the first boss. And after doing that for a while, I didn't realize that there's a second area for me to explore. So I started replaying the game as different builds just to test them out. And literally at the very end, I found out there was a second boss gate and I was like, what? And I started running to it and I just never quite made it because of a fucking bridge that I fell off a couple times and then when I went to go away soapstone and invade, help someone else they fell off the bridge when I was in their game and there's a guy guarding it who every time I was about to walk through uh, you're not invincible anymore the moment you start walking through a fog gate so I'd start walking through the fog gate and then he would hit me out of the fog gate and kill me so uh, damn it damn it Ah, hopefully the next beta round I'll get to try it out. But I did get to face the Mirror Knight uh, in the E3 demo. I did get to face him, and I got to face the Skeleton Lord boss fight in this one. Uh, apparently the boss that I missed is a Chariot boss. I don't quite know how that goes. I haven't seen it. So, But I think it's different too. And the thing to note about all these boss fights that I've done at least is that they're all very different from Dark Souls at least. I know Mirror Knight's similar to a Demon Souls one, but it's all it's all different so than what you'd be expecting. It's all very unique, which was pretty cool. So the Mirror Knight from the E3 demo, he has a enemy that he will uh, take out of his shield. So an, an enemy will leave his shield when he summons an enemy as you're fighting him. And he's kind of like one of those typical big boss type of enemies, except for the fact that he can eventually summon one typical enemy to help him out. If you're playing it online, which I think, I mean, which you probably would be, he can also summon a PvP enemy to help him out. I'm not sure how it chooses a PvP enemy to shoot out of his shield, but he can summon a PvP enemy too. Um, I learned that in the press room. Because they didn't actually show that during the E3 demo. But, uh, the next boss then that I fought was the Skeleton Lord. And the Skeleton Lord, he wasn't a singular boss. It was three big skeletons. At least I think it was three. There could have been one more. But I think it was three big skeleton lords who were bigger versions of skeletons who you have to take down. And then there's a whole bunch of skeletons that are like necromanced up that you have to kill. And all of them count for this overall health of the skeleton lord. So it's like this giant chamber of skeletons. And every single enemy is part of this giant chamber of skeletons that's in this boss area. And each one that you kill dwindles down its health and even if you hit it and hurt it it dwindles down its health but i mean these skeletons included like skeleton warriors uh stronger skeleton warriors weak skeletons and bone wheels are back 
Hooray! We all love those guys. Yeah, they're back. And they're the Skeleton Lords. So you had to kill this entire room of skeletons. Uh, each time I did it, I actually had White Phantoms with me when I did it in my own uh, version. And then whenever I White Phantom people, obviously there were multiple of us. So it seems like something that would be very difficult if it's you solo. But honestly, with a bunch of people, it was pretty easy because it's like, all right, I'll take this enemy. All right, you take that enemy. While you're stunning him, I'll go heal up. Because that's another thing. You can heal online now. You can actually heal up by using uh, Estus Flask and by using Life Gems. So uh, you can heal up now. So you can just be like, hey, peace out for a moment. I'm going to heal up while you guys distract them. So uh, at least that boss wasn't too difficult. Chariot boss. <laughs> I don't know. I was so mad. I was... Literally, it was like 10 minutes left. I was like, no, I just need to get to the chariot boss. And that was when I realized it. I mean, I didn't know it was a chariot boss. I was just like, I need to get to this boss. Get fate. And then I was playing crappy because I was trying to just get to it as opposed to being playing smart. So, my bad. And that's why I should have never gone for that human effigy jump, which I at least did get. Ah. Ah. So, another thing I do want to talk about with the enemies before I wrap up this whole thing is that um, there was a lot of the larger enemies, like those ogres, kind of like the trolls in Dark Souls, that size of enemies. There were a bunch of those this time around. There was a big ogre with a ring, but there were a bunch of them who would attack you, and then Red Phantom versions of them. And then there was this other larger enemy in Red Phantom versions of that guy, sort of like a knight sort of character with a spear, but then one of them had a whip. And then there were a bunch of larger enemies this time around, which are more difficult because they're larger enemies, and evasion's not quite what it used to be. And eventually, as I got my evasion up higher, I actually was getting better at evading them, figuring out ways to evade and get around them. But it wasn't quite the same as having that invincibility frame, again, as the dex build in Dark Souls. So, I feel like I've been talking about this stuff for a long, long time. This is a super long video, so... Uh, again, lore I will talk about in another video if I do do it. There's not too much relating to Lordron at least, and what I learned here was a lot of new areas, a lot of new stuff. Not really stuff we can relate back to the old gods, at least in the item descriptions I was reading, except for, um, I think there's at least one lore speculation I had that is spot on. And I won't say which one it is here. So there's an NPC at the beginning, the very beginning you could talk about. It. I think the NPC was human. I'm pretty sure. So that's kind of also an interesting note there to think about. Uh, so again though, with the lore though, I'll talk about it in another video if I get a chance though, but I did want to mention that the very beginning of this demo, of this um, this beta, was a NPC that you could talk to who sold you things. It was an NPC merchant. So, final impressions, final takeaway is that I took a couple hours to take a little break before I made this video, so I kind of went hung out with friends for a little bit even though it was late. Got back and I kind of wrote up some notes and checked out some things. And the one thing I can really say is that after going and hanging out with friends, all I could think about was how much I wanted to play Dark Souls 2. I just wanted to come back home and play more Dark Souls 2, which I couldn't do. And then I was watching my video stuff so I could write notes of Dark Souls 2 and I was like, I just want to play more Dark Souls 2, so it's good. I really like it. I still don't know if I, I'm going to like it more than Dark Souls 1 or not, uh, or Demon Souls or what, but you know what? It, it is a lot of fun. It definitely still feels like Dark Souls. It's different. It's definitely different. There are changes, as I've noted. Um, there's things that I like. There are things that I don't like, but any sequel, you're going to get that. You're going to get stuff you do like and don't like, so you just have to take that, accept it, and hope that what you get is still a great game, and I think it is still a great game, at least from what I was playing of it. And honestly, the fact that I got to actually sit down this time around, as opposed to E3, where I was standing up, trying to get through what I could with people like trying to rush me so I could go do more interviews and all that, um, I really had a lot more fun with the beta than I had with the E3 demo. And again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that there was exploration this time around, and this time I got to really just really get really immersed in the game and just really feel like I was in it. Whereas Aether has just, again, pulled left and right and left and right. And there were some really frustrating moments to me, like the bridge to get to the boss where there were holes in the way. And the first couple times I ran and fell through this hole in the bridge that I didn't notice. And then 
When I went phantom to somebody, he fell through the hole, and I was like, no, oh, I need to get to the boss. But, again, that's kind of Dark Souls, right? You just, you have frustrating moments, but then you work through them, and you get through them, and you feel so badass, and, you know, it's, it's just great. Just whole new areas to explore, new bosses. It was, it was just so much fun, so... I really, really enjoyed the beta, definitely more than I enjoyed E3. After E3, I was like, you know what, maybe I'll like Dark Souls 2, I'm sure it's going to be good, probably, but this time I can pretty firmly say that I had a great time. I had a really good time, and I cannot wait for the next beta, and March can't come soon enough, you guys, really, March cannot come soon enough. So. I'm going to stop now because I've been going for a long, long ass time. But guys, let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts. If you guys have questions about the gameplay, I'll answer them in the comments. If you guys played the beta and you have comments, thoughts about what your experiences were, let me know. Sorry if there's anything I missed. I feel like this has gone on long enough and I've been rambling a lot. But I just had a great time. So I just want to be like, you know what? I got to sit down. I got to talk about this right now and get this out for you guys to hear about and uh, chat with you guys about it because, God, it was so much fun. So... Uh, thank you guys so much for joining me, and if I do a lore video, I'll see you there. If not, I'm sorry, it's just that, you know, I don't know what FromSoft does and doesn't want to get out, so. And again, I don't even know about this one, so if this gets taken down, I'll take it down if it needs to be. So, you know what guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.